Every single one of us has troubles in his life. Every single one of us has made mistakes. Every single one of us is a sinner. And every single one of us is hopeful and wishful that when I stand before Allah on the day of resurrection, Allah is going to turn a blind eye and forgive all my sins. Yet you can't even forgive the person you grew up with for years of your life for one issue. You can't even forgive. And people tell me, brother, but it's my heart, it's my right. Let me tell you bluntly, brother, there is no heart in this world. The only heart you will ever have is when you stand before Allah in front of the real judge in the real court. Then and only then will you ever really get your heart. This world will never, ever, ever do you justice. Where are we? Really, my brothers, wallahi, where are we, man? Forgive me, you know, if I'm a bit too, but wallahi, my heart hurts me, hurts me. When I see two people who before the drama, they're the most religious and God-fearing and Allahu Akbar and well, oh brother, we're like this and eat the Al-Quran and well, I forgive you and I love you for the sake of Allah. But as soon as you step on my toes, what was once a nice bead is a piece of Velcro, throws it right out the door. Come here, you little this and that and let me, wow man, what happened cuz, what happened? Yeah, but he disrespected me. Let it go man, let it go, not for, it, for Allah's sake. Let it go, cuz. Let it go. There's those that show mercy and compassion towards one another. The one in the heavens will show mercy and compassion towards them. You see, my brothers, you know what I love about the Sahaba? The Sahaba were real people. Many of us, we like to praise the Sahaba so much so to the point where we start painting this picture like they never did anything wrong. Well, you're very wrong. Sahaba did a lot of things wrong, but that's what was beautiful about them because they made mistakes, then the way they dealt with their mistakes is what makes them so special and so unique. One particular incident, after one of the battles, there was booty of war, gold, silver, swords, shields, stuff like this. So the Sahaba gathered, there's a lot of it, it's money. So they started sharing their opinions as to how they should distribute this wealth. And please don't listen to the story for the she entertainment of it. Live the story, brother. Try to imagine. I'm not sharing with you old Disney fairy tales. These are real stories of your fathers. Why? Not to entertain you, but to learn. Because you know what, my brothers, the truth is, when really push comes to shove, we don't follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Deep down, we're gangsters. That's what we are, man. And being a gangster doesn't necessarily mean you got tattoos and you used to sell drugs on the streets. Wallahi, I know Abu Ali's and Abu Ahmed's that are more gangsters than any youngster on the street that I can ever be. Gangster with your character and your attitude. We don't follow Rasulullah. We follow people like Tony Montana in Scarface, yeah, and Tupac in Mabarif Shu. And the, we, that's it, brother. That, that's, that's, that's the way it is, cuz. That's how it is on the streets, brother. What deen is this man? So the Sahaba, each man gave his opinion. Then Abu Dhar gave his opinion on the matter. For those of you who don't know Abu Dhar, Abu Dhar is Arab, Arab, Arab. Yeah, and he makes an Arab feel like he's a non-Arab. You can't be any more Arab than what Abu Dhar was. So Abu Dhar also gave his opinion. Today, mosques, I was in Canada, the brother, mosques are waiting in courts to deal with the issues. Why? Because brother, I gave my opinion. And this guy disrespected me when we were in the meeting. Uh, so now it's me versus him. And mosques are going to war with each other. Why? Who's hit it? Brother, I gave my opinion. What? And he went against me? Doesn't he know who I am? I've been here for 10 years, brother. This guy's only been on the board for five years. These are the people that are leading our masajid, mashallah. So Abu Dhar gave his opinion. Then the next person was Bilal, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Bilal is the mu'addin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bilal not only used to be a slave, but an Abyssinian slave, meaning he was black. So as far as society is concerned, talk about being rock bottom. But you see, Islam came to break this. So when Bilal gave his opinion, he says, Abu Dhar, I disagree with you. Allahu Alam, I think this is what we should do with the wealth. So Abu Dhar, imagine being put on the spot in front of everyone. He says, even you, Ya Bilal, even you, you son of a black woman, even you're gonna disagree with me today. These are big words, so Bilal, rightfully so got very upset he picked himself up and went to the prophet of allah now i want to pause you for a minute because i want to prove my point that we don't follow the sunnah of rasulullah we follow the sunnah of who sheikh tony montana mashallah and maulana tupac when we hear the story of the sahaba 
We exclude our life and our societies. Well, because it's different times. My brothers, I want to ask you sincerely and I want you to answer sincerely. This act that Bilal did by picking himself up and going to the Prophet of Allah to complain. What is this act called in this day and age that we live in today? He's a snitch. True or not? Brother, we have a drama. You pick yourself up to go complain. What are you, woman, bro? That's Sri language. You see, but Bilal wasn't corrupted by your Tupac and your Tony Montana. Bilal was affected by your prophet who you claim that you follow. You see, Bilal had something in his heart, so he went to someone that can help him with this situation. You and I, na 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 na. That makes me less of a man. Na Habib, I'm gonna hold that in my heart for the next 20 years, I'm gonna fresh him, backbite him, wipe the floor with him, slander him with any opportunity that I can get for the next 20 years. But I won't go to someone that just might be able to help my situation. So Bilal goes, he tells the Prophet of Allah, the Prophet of Allah became furious. So the Prophet of Allah, he comes, he goes to where Abu Dhar was, and he grabs Abu Dhar by his, he grabs Abu Dhar. Talk about bridging up. This right now was bridging up. And he grabs Abu Dhar and shakes him and says, Abu Dhar, you are a man that still has Jahiliya in his heart. So what did Abu Dhar do? That little Agdai, that, is that what he said? Eidi al Quran, that's not what I said. Allah, Allah, I didn't mean it like that, bro. See, let me tell you the difference between a man and a so called man. A real man is a man when he. When he acknowledges that he really was in the wrong, he admits that he's in the wrong. So Abu Dhar lowers his head. He understands that he hurt his brother. He understands he upset his prophet. So how did he deal with the situation? Did he stop praying at that masjid so that I don't see Bilal? Because that's how we deal with our issues, isn't it? Did he? Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, after acknowledging that he's in the wrong, he picks himself up. He goes into the streets of Medina looking for Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Then when he sees and he finds Bilal, he goes to Bilal publicly, leave this with me, publicly in front of everyone. He goes to Bilal in front of everyone and gets down on the floor and says to Bilal, Ya Bilal, by Allah, I will not lift my head off the floor until you step on it with your foot and let it be known right here, right now in Medina, which one of us today is the honored and which one of us today, Ya Bilal, is the dishonored one? Come on, man. How come I haven't heard this story before, bro? So what did Bilal do? He's vulnerable. He's on the floor. He acknowledged. I told you, bro. I told you I was in the right. What did he do? Wallahi, an opportunity that most of us would love to have with those that hurt us. You see, real forgiveness is to forgive from your heart sincerely whether you can do something about it or you can't. You see, there are many of us who have issues and dramas with other people and we paint on the outside that, nah, brother, wallahi, man, I forgive him for the sake of Allah. You little kazab, you little spinner. The only reason that you claim that you forgive him is not because you really forgive him. The truth is, is you can't do anything to this guy anyway. So really by default, by the fact that I physically can't do anything, I disguise my weakness with what? Nah, wallahi, bro, I forgive him for the sake of Allah. But deep down in your heart, Deep down in your heart, if you got the news that a bus hit him, your heart will start to do the dabki, bro. So some brothers tell me, you know, cuz, listen, wallahi, bro, wallah, wallah, you know, I forgive him. Wallahi, I forgive him. But I don't forget, cuz, wow, mashallah, really? You forgive, but you don't forget? Well, I got news for you, bro. If you forgive, but don't forget, you didn't forgive to begin with. You see, this topic is not as juicy as what you first thought, eh? Why? Because it's hard on the nafs. Because this is real deen. This is real deen. So what did Bilal do? Bilal gets down on his hands and knees. He kisses Abu Dhar on the forehead. He says, Abu Dhar, are you serious? I forgive you for the sake of Allah. Done, finished, dusted, never to be spoken about again. Not drag it on for 10, 15 years. Not forget the fact that hours before this, they were both on the, they were both on the same battlefield fighting for the same Lord. See, we don't have this in our societies anymore, man. Why? Because today weakness is seen as what? Forgiveness is seen as what? But that's weakness, brother. La Habib, that's a real man. If you don't forgive, then woe to you the day you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, many of us, we tend to think that forgiveness is an option that I have. That if I want, I'll forgive. But if I don't want, brother, I'm going to hold on to this to the day of resurrection. I'm going to hold on to this to the day of resurrection. La, Habibi, la. 
doesn't work like that. Because a part of being a believer, a part of being a Muslim, a part of being the follower of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to have a heart that forgives. Not only does it forgive, but it loves to forgive. Regardless of the crime. So because I'm sure your mind is already going through a process. Oh, he's probably thinking, you know, he's probably speaking about forgiveness on small issues, light issues. No, I'm here to tell you today that there is absolutely no scenario, no issue, no situation that you could put forward before me that gives you any right to not forgive your Muslim brother. Nothing. And this is deen. This is real deen. This is the deen of the heart. This is the deen of breaking the nafs. The deen that no one likes to play with. The deen that no one likes to play with, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And let me make things clear. By no means am I saying you need to forgive because the person that you're forgiving is worthy of your forgiveness. That's irrelevant here today. I'm here to tell you that you have to forgive because you forgiving one another has nothing to do with the individual. Though there is benefit, but has everything to do with you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet of Allah says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Forgive one another, have rahmah amongst one another. Why? Why? Because they're Muslims? Why? Because they're deserving of it? He says, have mercy, show compassion towards one another. Why, O Prophet of Allah? He says, so the one in the heavens may show mercy and compassion towards us, towards you. Forgive. Let it go, my brother. Let it go, my sister, no matter what is happening in your life, no matter how dramatic shaitan has painted your scenario or your situation, it's only from shaitan and the key to everything is to just let it go, man.